friends. It's Tracy and Violet from Tea Time with Tracy and Violet. Violet is right behind you. I'll show you in a second, but it is Saturday morning. It's 10.55 in the morning, and I have to say I'm a little under the weather today. I didn't get a video up yesterday, but I was just in a sneeze fen frenzy, like my head's all congested, but I got some of my house tasks done this morning, and I brewed a big, big pot of peppermint tea or mint tea just to refresh and it's pres PC president's choice is what it stands for um, yeah London and packed in Canada so herbal tea but oh it's hot and muggy out actually I might take this off oh. or maybe it's just the sickness sweating out of me I don't know but anyways, I wanted to talk to you about a book. I don't have the physical book. I read it on uh, Kindle, I think. It's just like a novella. It's Ice Planet Barbarians. Yes. I heard all this hype. I guess it was all over TikTok, but I never seen it on TikTok. I try to stay away from TikTok because I fall down that hole and it's very addictive to me because <laughs> it's friggin' hilarious. But I seen anytime I watched a book, booktube kind of video, a lot of people mention this book and I'm like what the heck so I decided to read it for myself because peer pressure no not peer pressure but I had to see what the big whoop was all about Ice Planet Barbarians a sci-fi alien romance and that's what I'm going to talk about but first I'll show you this girl I brought out today and she's kind of fitting my mood today my yeah she's here to take care of me she's like oh darling let's go on outside sit in the shade I'll make you feel better and that's what she told me so I'm like all right lady let's go let's go but look at those colors the yellow and the type of blue and he was a green and stuff and she's a little thicker too on the thicker side but you know more loving she's just when I say that she's a bit heavier than some of the teacups but <laughs> She comes from good stock, if you know what I'm saying. But she has some gold down there at on her foot and gold up at the top. And she has gold on this side of her thing and on the back, but not on this side. So, and this is the back of her. She has a big bow in the back of her. And here is her skirt or her pedestal. I can't see there so this beautiful lady came from Queen and made in England product of Ridgeway Potteries bone China B 177 so yeah anyways huh <sighs> I don't know I've steeped this for a few minutes yeah and I filled it right up filled it right up so I'll drink this all morning boiled the kettle on the stove and yeah that's a good color that's a good color. Probably burn my face off. But, anyways. This probably won't be a long video. I just wanted to... Oh, that's perfect. I just wanted to talk about this. A little blurb. To do some book talk. It just makes me happy. Having a cup of tea, talking about books. Violet, could you please get out of the flowers? Turkey bird. Anyways, I'll put a picture up of the book cover right here. Yeah. So, anyways, I read this, God, a month ago or something. And it's it's really like maybe 200 pages long. It's not a very long book. But the series, there's like 22 books in the series. And I'm not against reading the other books. I just haven't got around to it. And the author is Ruby Dixon. I have read something from Ruby before. I can't remember what it was called. It was years ago. It was a dragon shifter one. It had like dragons that shifted into people. Violet, look, she's right. Look, 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 look. Look. I don't know if you can see her. Violet, get out of there. Get out of there. I know you're a violet, Violet, but you don't belong in that flower bed. I gotta get, I gotta get her out of there. Oh no, she's gotten out. Now you're all tangled. 
You're all tangled. Are you Alice in Wonderland and this is the flower garden? Mind your P's and Q's, would ya? There. All right. Anyways, yeah, I read this a while ago and I did read something in Ruby Dixon and I did enjoy it and I, it was a dragon shifter series and I think I only read one or two of the books and I remember liking them, but I guess not that much that I recall them. And I read them on my Kobo, like I don't have the physical book. But yes, this Ice Planet Barbarians, um, as you can see by the cover, there's aliens in this, of course, and they're big and blue and beautiful. Well, you see them from the backside, but what I can recall, the story jumps on the scene with this girl named Georgie. She's abducted in the middle of the night, so she's just in her pajamas, and she wakes up on the spaceship, and she doesn't know how she got there. So when she wakes up, there's other women there. Now, all of these women are 22 years old. They're healthy. They're, there's nothing wrong with them. They don't have really any family or anything like that. 22 years old. There's, I think, six ladies that are in tanks up on the wall. And then there's ladies that, like, preservation tanks. Like, so they're in stasis or something. And then there's, I don't know, 10 or 15 other women that are just extras and she's one of the extras like they don't have the tanks to fit them they the aliens that abducted them were just trying to make a few extra bucks and the aliens that abducted them are mean sons of guns really mean um i envision this that they're in a big cargo hold they're locked in and Oh, she's playing with her frisbee. They're locked in. It's cold. It's they're in deep space, and yeah, these women—they're all—they all seem to be in their underwear or pajamas. Like they must have been all abducted in, um, in the nighttime, and yeah, they gravitate towards. There's a butterfly. Georgie to warn her okay just come over here you got to be quiet you have to be quiet and of course of course um, she doesn't understand why she has to be quiet it's very important to be quiet the people that abducted her don't want any kind of fuss don't want any kind of fuss um, another lady comes along and she's totally freaking out so she is making a fuss and she is screaming and hooting and hollering and of course all the ladies are like Oh, you gotta come over here. You gotta be quiet, quiet. But she, she doesn't listen. And what takes place is these mean aliens. They have like basketball heads, like they're ugly mofos. They come in and assault this lady, and straight up assault her. What you think assault, sexual assault is, brutally. Which I was shocked. Like I didn't see that happening. You know, the way the story was going. It didn't seem to go, it just was extreme all of a sudden, but yeah. Anyways, this poor lady found out what it's like if they make noise. All right, so she was never quite the same after that. Like she didn't want to connect with the ladies or anything. She just kind of turned into a shell of who she was before. Nobody ever really got to know her because she that happened as soon as she came, and then she just was clocked out, sort of thing. At some point, time goes on, they don't know where they are, they don't get fed anything proper, like they they have a general staple, I forget what they described it as, but just not human food. They get one little serving of this, and it's disgusting, but that's all they have to eat. And, uh, yeah, Georgie, who ha seems to have more initiative um, in regards to, okay, we need to, we need to escape here. We need to do something. And they hatch a plan. 
So how are they going to do this? They're on a spaceship. Like, what are they going to do? But they eventually get a gun from one of the guards that come in. Like, they make a fuss so he comes in and then they ambush him sort of thing. But at that same time, the spaceship is having trouble. And one of the ladies that are in the group had a translator implanted in their ear so they could communicate. So she was hearing that they're going to have to dump cargo uh, to stabilize or something like that and said that they'll come back to get them, get the cargo after. But the cargo turns out to be these ladies. Uh, so they were going to dump these ladies on a safe, well, uh, not safe, but a planet that they could potentially survive on. Turns out they dropped this in in my mind I envisioned it as a great big cube. I don't know if that's what it is but in my mind it's a giant cube of a cargo warehouse that's dropped on this ice planet. And they're just dropped willy-nilly. Some of the ladies are really hurt. Some of them I think passed away. Broken bones sort of thing. The ones that are in those uh, stasis tanks are fine, but the other ones, you know, they're beat up. They fell from space and landed on this ice planet. There is a little rip in the, like I said, it's like a gi giant square. Gym, is, in my mind, is what it looks like. So there's a spot where somebody can get out and go look around, look for some food or something, because they don't have anything. Like, they're freezing. They don't have clothes, they don't have nothing. And uh, Georgie is the one to go because she's the one that's less injured, who has more of the mental determination and potential know-how, even though I think she's from California, so she's not used to snow and ice at all. So she ends up taking the clothes off of one of the guards that died to wear that and goes trudging along out into this ice planet. This place is friggin' freezing. And in my mind, I'm from Canada. It's not the coldest place in Canada. Like Nova Scotia is not the coldest place in Canada, but when it's cold, when I think of an ice planet, it would be like Nunavut or something like that. The tundra. This is what I'm envisioning in this. The tundra and you just have a guard's outfit on. You're not going to last a half hour, but it's a book, so, you know. Anyways, she goes trudging along, and it's very difficult for her, okay? Very difficult. And uh, she comes to, off in the distance, it looks like a body of water. And she eventually makes it there, but as she was about to lean down, she's looking in this weird colored water a giant uh fish monster thing jumps out together but she scrambles back and gets away but it scared the bejesus out of her of course of course it would you know as she falls back and decides to go back to the ladies because she's not going to be able to make it there's no weapons there's no nothing there's nothing she gets sneered up into a trap and she's hung upside down in this tree and of course like she can't get out of this she's freezing hypothermia almost and she's hung upside down but somebody must be on the planet to have made to have made this trap anyways fast forward a bit she's passed out and she's upside down in comes the the uh i was gonna say man the male person being in this story. I think his name is Vector or uh, Vectal. Starts with a V. Anyways, this is the first encounter. And he sees this strange thing he caught in the trap. Now, I just want to say this alien he's about seven feet tall he's super tall he's super buffed he's blue he has long black hair he has a tail and does he have four fingers I forget something like that he has strange eyes 
but he's very handsome in his own alien sort of way. Kind of reminds me of Avatar in my mind. You know, how they're big and tall and stuff like that. Um, he thinks he hit the jackpot because here's this person. She's, he's never seen somebody like her, but he has something in his chest that starts vibrating. I think it's called a cooey. What it is, it's a parasite. And everybody that lives on this planet needs to have a cooey. I think that's what it's called. And the cooey recognizes its mate. And Vectar's, if I'm saying his name right, I'll put it down below, but just go with me, okay? He starts humming, like, and it's a full-on hum, like, mmm, towards uh, Georgie, who's unconscious, hanging upside down. So he perceives this as, this is my mate. This is my mate. I found my one true mate, like faded mates. So he cuts her down. She's still unconscious, and then he starts to go, well, he starts to go downtown, if you know what I'm saying downtown he likes the kitty cat but she's unconscious so this can be a little disturbing I guess but she does wake up and she kind of goes with it so this is their first encounter I'm keeping this very bare bones there's not a whole lot to go into it this this story is very kind of straightforward in regards to stuff there's nothing super deep in it but yes that's how they met and of course she's freaked out but she's had so much hardship over the past couple of weeks or however long it's been. And she wakes up to this and she bursts, <laughs> you know, uh, of course he can't speak English and she can't speak his language, but all he knows is this is my mate and I'm not going to let her go. I'm going to protect her and feed her and keep her warm. And this strange little creature, she is mine and mine only. And, yeah, that's, that's where they meet. So there's quite a few things that happen in between, but eventually Georgie convinces him to go back to this spaceship where uh, the rest of the ladies are. And of course she's feeling guilty. It takes a few days to get back there because the weather, different incidents that happen, but she's full on enjoying his company you know what I'm saying and her friends are back there freezing to death and starving eventually they get back there and Vector is blown away because for so long him and his people have been on this planet just themselves there's animals and crazy creatures but they were scared of dying out a race that's dying out there's no mates for anybody so this book and I'm assuming the whole series has to do with finding mates and increase the population so he arrives at this big square gymnasium stuck in this ice planet and finds I don't know 15 20 women ideal age for mates and things so fast forward a bit more Georgie and Vector promised to come back to bring help from his village but they need to go to his village because they don't even know about Georgie yet and on the way there they find an old spaceship that has been there for however long and there's some sort of machine that can download his language into her, like through the eye laser or something. So eventually she can understand him and he can understand her. <clears throat> they go back. They go get uh, some of his tribesmen. And they are just, they're big, beautiful, blue aliens. And... 
they're all excited to find oh there's there's women there's potential mates and all this stuff so they're all fierce and want to go save these ladies because this might be this might be what we've always been waiting for oh my goodness Violet and they end up going and I'm not gonna say much more about that because whatever but for people to stay on this planet the Kui or Kui that is in these aliens they have to art be artificially put into them and nobody can live on this planet for very long unless they get this parasite so they either get these women have to decide whether to get this parasite and stay on the planet because once they get the parasite they can't they can't leave or they'll die or don't get the parasite and they'll die anyways within time unless you're gonna wait for the bad aliens to come pick you up and try to escape again somewhere so yeah the Kui though or Kui is in so, is like inside of a giant beast that they have to hunt and kill take the little parasite worm things out slice in their neck and it's supposed to go in their body and it it takes over their body in the sense of uh, it helps keep them warm it helps heal faster it helps with different things like that but once once they have that parasite that's it and there's some decisions that have to be made there's some certainly some drama that goes on but all in all I have to say I don't feel bad talking this much about it because it's really just a short story and there's 22 friggin books in the whole series so you know this was a total easy read like I think I read it in one day and it kept me engaged the whole time it did it was it wasn't anything dramatic it wasn't anything didn't get me twisted up in knots it was it's really just a sci-fi happily ever after strangers to lovers is that is that a thing they're not enemies but they're just faded mate sort of thing and I would recommend it if you want something I'm not against reading the rest of the series I'm not I would use those little books as a cleanser um, at some point if I just want to switch it up completely switch it up with what I'm reading I'm I'm getting to that point now I think I'm gonna read I'm in the middle of reading a book now and I'm gonna finish that one and it's very dark and ridiculously crazy and then I'm gonna read a not a not dark one I got books from a library like I bought books from a library sale I'm gonna read one of those just to switch it up and then go back to some more crazy but um, I would use one of these books as a switch up sometime. Now, if I was in the mood for a sci-fi adventure, it'd be great. And yeah, I didn't know anything about this series until I seen it on YouTube. And you can buy it in paperback, I guess, but it's like $15, $17 for a little tiny novella. And I'm like, no, I'll just see if it's on this Kindle thing. Paperbacks are my favorite. They are. If I could buy the whole box set at a reasonable price, I would in paperback. But you'd have to buy them all individually, and I'm not doing that. So, yeah. Anyways, for those that might be interested in reading Ice Planet Barbarians, it's a good book. It is. It's nothing dramatic, but it's good. It's not scary. It's not... Um, there's not really any gore or uh, deception there's you know there is a trigger warning for that assault at the beginning for sure and the consent thing when he first finds her she's not fighting him or anything but it was just well how do you do there sir you know what I mean like that's not how you greet people well I don't think you don't greet people by that way but then again you're not on friggin earth anymore so go with the flow sister go with the flow 
anyways I'm gonna end this now because I'm talking longer than I thought honestly I was just like I'm coming out here I'll have some mint tea I'll clear my mind I'll feel the air and yeah I'll go back to my real life when I go back in there it's 11 20 and I got the rest of the day to get through things so Violet can you come over here I don't know she's tangled I'll get her come here all right I'm gonna get you right up on my lap because I love you you're my baby all right there <laughs> We want to say peace, love, and happiness today and every single day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you so choose, but if not, that's okay. We still love you. We still want all the happiness in the world for each and every one of you out there. Violet, we certainly do. We really, really honest and truly do. Yes, we do. So if you are interested in that book, I'll put it down below um, or look it up on Kindle, Ruby Dixon, Ice Planet by Barbarians, book one. So. All right, guys. Well, with that, I'm going to say have a good night or have a good morning. And I will maybe oh, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bloop. Violet.